Hi, this is Ed from Wright. Hope you're doing great. Last week we announced this new machine, the WZXT. It's a heavy duty rider, 26 inch tires, very low maintenance requirements, 40 horsepower, oil guard. Um, it's, it's a sector that's a little bit newer to us. We've made a lot of different riders over the years, but this is our biggest rider that we've ever built and has some unique things. And this week we're announcing something that's pretty neat. We're, we call it bumper to bumper coverage. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna get specifically into what that add-on looks like. But before we get there, I'm gonna combine that with another topic of reliability and some of the science behind reliability. And we'll talk about warranties, and then we'll get to, to the bumper to bumper coverage piece of it. So first off, when we talk about reliability with our equipment, uh, naturally we recognize that all of our equipment will fail at some point. Uh, ben Franklin had you said that um, there's, there's nothing certain in life but death and taxes. Well, I think with our equipment, there's um, something that is certain about it, and that's that all of our equipment's going to break down and at some point reach the end of its life. So what we're talking about here is not saying our equipment doesn't break. What we're talking about is saying that to the extent that we can, we're doing everything that we know we can do to give you the longest amount of time where you have the least amount of issues, the least amount of variable cost, and the most amount of time you have available to turn your time into money more regularly. So um, let's talk, start with reliability. So reliability, when you buy a new piece of anything that's mechanical, it's most unreliable, and then it goes through a break-in, and it becomes the most reliable it'll ever be, and then as it gets through its life, it becomes slightly and slightly less reliable. It goes up like this a little bit. Um, and there's, there's some physics behind this. So there's, in a mechanical type machine, everything breaks down due to one of two causes, fatigue or wear. So fatigue is if you just flex something a certain amount of times, eventually the material is gonna break down and it's gonna break in half. Uh, and then wear, two things, rubbing against each other and eventually the material erodes away. You can have corrosion and that type of thing too, but we're generally talking about fatigue and wear. So first off, fatigue, well, the metal that these machines made out of, it's actually a crystal, metal is a crystalline uh, substance and it has an elastic limit. If you go past the elastic limit, uh, you're yielding it and the, the material is, is failing. Too many cycles and it falls apart. Well, when we make something out of steel, we can only use about a quarter of the strength of the steel because if we use more than that, then the machine would turn into powder at a couple thousand hours and we can't have that. Um, but, but metal over many cycles will exhibit something called brittle fracture and um, that's that cycling that goes on. And it tends to be that if something's gonna fail from cycles, it's typically gonna fail around a million or million and a half cycles, which is something that can easily happen in the first couple weeks of ownership. So oftentimes if you have um, fatigue failure, it's gonna be really quick. Um, now, wear is a failure mode. I don't know how to describe wear so much, but you know, two, two surfaces running against each other and some material disappears, it has a very linear rate to it. So over time, it's wearing sort of steadily along the way and all the components start kicking in and that's why you have that slight decrease in reliability towards the end of life of, of anything. Um, now in, in terms of context, if you buy a new truck, you have a higher chance of being left on the side of the road for the first couple weeks than you do around 150 to 200,000 miles. When you get up to half a million miles and it's not well maintained, you're at a point where it's probably less reliable there than it was new. Um, but this is, this is not necessarily intuitive. A lot of people, they get a, have a vehicle, it gets to 100,000 miles, and their perception is it's, it's going to become unri unreliable now and need to buy a new car. Well, really what they do is they trade in something that was at its most reliable point for something that has a higher chance of leaving them on the side of the road. Um, for mowers, typically that highest, um, that, that lowest reliability point is a week, maybe three weeks, something like that. That's where most warranty dollars are spent. And then when you get towards the end of a warranty period, um, the end of, most, end of most warranty periods haven't started their increase uh, in failures. Usually it just goes down, 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 um, out to five years, something like this. Um, at that point it becomes um, much, much smaller. And also the other thing there is that on warranty, you're typically 
warranties typically don't cover wear parts, which is part of what happens near the end there. Um, but a mower at a thousand hours is more reliable than a brand new mower. Uh, it's, it's pretty consistent um, across the board. So for a second, let's talk about new products. A lot of times first year products are scrutinized as being less reliable and that sometimes is the case. Um, and oftentimes their, their issues relate to um, failure modes that are associated with things that the manufacturer didn't test for, they didn't expect, or they uh, didn't do or forgot to do, something like that. Usually it's, it's those types of cases, or it's a build issue, some kind of teething issue in manufacturing. Usually those are, are where you get um, new product type failures. All right, let's talk about warranties for a second. Uh, we'll say there's generally three kinds of warranties. In the mower business, there's, there's mostly two. So there's typically an all-in commercial warranty, unlimited hours, and covers for commercial use. Then there's a, a second type of warranty, which is called a commercial warranty. So you can use the machine for revenue generating purposes, but it's limited in the amount of hours that that coverage gives you. So um, oftentimes the hours associate, is more associated with residential type use. So if you're putting in a daily use, that warranty doesn't, you, you run out of time really quickly on it. Um, but they still, it's still covering the initial period, which is where the greatest um, probability things going wrong happens anyways. My point here is that a warranty that's four years or six years really doesn't do you any good in most cases because they're covering defects in manufacturing and it, most defects in manufacturing are discovered in the first 30 days. If you had a defect in manufacturing, you would have found it long before five years. And so a six year warranty really doesn't put anything on the table for you monetarily. Um, so, so don't really look at warranty duration. I would say very much look more at a manufacturer's reputation around warranty coverage. Um, you know, are they covering things that shouldn't have broke is, is the grander concept here. Uh, and, it, and, you know, on paper, they're limited to defects in manufacturing, but in execution, uh, is it a little bit broader than that? And that's really what matters to you a lot more. And that's really how um, the warranty benefits you. Um, now, the third type of warranty is something that would be more like a full coverage warranty that you or uh, extended coverage that you might buy with a car or something like this. Um, and those warranties, they call them warranties, but really they're insurance policies um, because most warranties are against the cause of failure being defective manufacturing and they're administered by oftentimes quality departments. Whereas uh, these extended coverage things, they're oftentimes administered by more of an insurance type approach regardless of the cause. So um, it's, it's really about coverage than it is about it being a warranty. And in, in, a, in a car, usually the monthly payments and this kind of thing, but if you look at the net present value, they, they could be valued anywhere between $1,500, $2,500, something like this, um, applied to a monthly payment of some sort. And um, usually they're limited to, you know, not small issues, like they wouldn't cover, you know, a jammed window or something, but they'll cover the transmission. Typically, they're, they're just covering the bigger things where there's a lot of statistical knowledge or st statistical history around that that expense that they're going to incur by doing that. Um, now it's typically not seen as much in worksite products because they get used a lot more variably um, and there's less data in it. So it's unusual to see it in something like a mower. Um, but as it pertains to this mower, we're talking about bumper to bumper coverage. So, so let's say what is that and why we're doing it. So what is bumper to bumper coverage on the ZXT? What it means is that from the, from the time you own it for the first year of ownership, we're covering everything that could relate to the machine shutting down, regardless of whether it was a wear part or manufacturing defect, or we're actually even layering coverage on top of the engine. If the engine, if the engine manufacturer, if it's not within their warranty, uh, we're covering that. So uh, we're, we're covering all in that first year. Um, our, we're doing this for a couple reasons. Oh, the things that we, we, we would exclude a couple things. Um, direct damage, um, getting a nail in the tire. But if you have abnormal tire wear, that's something we would cover. Um, 
So there's some direct damage that we wouldn't cover, um, being lost in the flood, something like that, right? Um, but why are we doing this? Uh, for a few reasons. One is it's a statement. You know, we're committed to building equipment that is designed for daily, heavy duty use with low maintenance and high reliability. And this puts our money where our mouth is. Uh, we know that you're running a business where you're turning time into money and you wanna do that quickly and consistently. And this supports that. It reduces your variable costs. The other thing we know is that you know, new products, uh, there can be hesitation to buy a, a first year product. Um, and I think this is another way of putting our money where our mouth is or our confidence in this product is by offering this type of coverage. The third thing here is that the way we look at our business and part of this is our legacy as having been a landscape uh, contractor, you know, we ask ourselves if we were in your shoes, what would be looking for? What would, would be, what would we be, what would we be looking for? And we would be looking for something like this, you know, a commitment to what it is that you're buying. You're buying uh, an, ex an expensive piece of equipment. And, you know, I'll be the first to say we're not the cheapest out there, but we do try to build equipment that lets you make the most profit. That's the diff difference here. Um, so if we were in your shoes, we would want to see um, a manufacturer back the equipment up like this. Now, like I said, this, this add-on, uh, we look at the type of coverage that's out there. We believe that this is at least a $1,500 value for something that's used this intensively. But the cool thing that we're doing here is if you buy a machine before the end of April, you get this bumper to bumper coverage at no cost to you. And so that fits together with a couple things that are happening on this machine. The hydro system holds eight quarts, runs very cool. The type of oil we put in it means you don't have to change the oil for a thousand hours or your first year. There's no grease fittings on this machine. The engine has the oil guard system on it, so you change the oil at 500 hours. So if you look at one year of ownership, your variable expense generally should be blades, fuel, and oil change on the engine, maybe an engine air filter, a couple things that you do at the 500 hour point, but we want to give you full confidence and full coverage for your first year of ownership for mowers that are sold between now and the end of April. Um, and you know, we'll, we'll see how this program works at that point and evaluate where we are, but we're committed to offering this add-on through mowers sold through the end of April. And um, you know, I, I hope this is something uh, you take a look at. And um, if you have any questions, be sure to put them in the comments and we'll be glad to uh, get back with you. Hope you have a good rest of your season.